on the day of Samuel's accident, he was playing in the backyard with his older sister. Mum was in and out of the house, a bright, sunny sort of day. Joanne was, um, could hear the kids playing, they were having fun in the backyard while she was in and out, hanging clothes on the line, doing all the things that you would expect. And um, unfortunately, our five-year-old daughter raised the alarm, telling mum that there was something she needed to see. Um, and yeah, Joanne came out to find that Samuel was in the pool. As a result of getting into the pool, uh, suffered a catastrophic brain injury that left him with a whole range of disabilities. And then there was a, a, an incredibly steep learning curve uh, for us as a family to learn how to care for uh, a little boy who was essentially like a newborn baby all over again, um, from being a bright, happy, precocious, jumping around, um, bubbly little two and a half year old, to yeah, essentially being like a newborn again and, and requiring 24 hour round the clock care. And unfortunately he passed away at the start of 2014. Royal Life Saving and, and many of our partners have been focused for many years on reducing drowning. Uh, the Water Safety Strategy talks about reducing drowning by 50% by 2020. We experience around about 280 fatal drownings every year, um, but that's only part of the picture. Um, understanding non-fatal is critical to our ability to not only prevent drowning, but also support the many families that are impacted by non-fatal drowning each year. We've done a 13 year study looking at non-fatal drowning in Australia and what it showed us is that over the 13 years there were 6,158 hospitalisations that occurred as a result of a non-fatal drowning. So that's 474 people on average each year that are impacted by non-fatal drowning. We know that for every fatal drowning there's three non-fatal incidents. Swimming pools were the leading location for non-fatal drowning with more than a third of incidents in pools. Interestingly, over the 13 years, non-fatal drownings actually increased by 42%, whereas at the same time, fatal drowning has decreased by 17%. So what really stood out was children under the age of five. It's really concerning to us. There were 42% of these non-fatal incidents just in children between the ages of zero and four years. As a paediatrician, I've been involved in perhaps more than 400 both fatal and non-fatal drowning cases. When a child drowns, whether that child cannot be resuscitated or whether a successful resuscitation uh, is, uh, is achieved, there are always long-term uh, effects. We do know that in the case of non-fatal drowning, in the case of children at least, about 20 or 30 percent have some islands of mental functioning picked off by the lack of oxygen but a very small proportion of children remain in a tragic, almost vegetative state for the rest of their life. The importance for surf life saving and royal life saving and the community in looking into non-fatal drowning situations is looking at the, the value to the community. We know that the loss of life is a traumatic one, but also there's people who are hospitalised for short periods of time to long periods of time, and that has a very adverse effects. Um, to families, friends, the general community and a cost to the community as well. So what we want to do is prevent the loss of life but also prevent injuries from occurring and therefore the impacts that may have to families and loved ones. Non-fatal drowning impacts so many more Australians than fatal drowning. Unfortunately we hear cases where people are rescued, they're resuscitated, it might be young children in backyard swimming pools, it might be people in rivers, lakes and dams, they get taken to hospital and we only hear if it's fatal, if it's not fatal, then we never follow those people, we never hear their stories and we very rarely understand the impact that drowning has on their lives. The purpose of the report is to answer those many questions, to help us to be better at preventing drowning but also providing a better quality of service to those many Australians who suffer the lifelong consequences of drowning.